Hey everybody, it's JJ Velopis. I am a sophomore and I'm a TA for 120. We're going to be looking at the abstract stack machine, its implications and relationships with what we've been learning in the class so far, and uh, how you can use it as a simplification model um, throughout the class and on exams. If you have any questions, you can of course come to my or any other TA's office hours, Tuesday 8 to 10 before spring break, and then Wednesday 8 to 10 uh, after spring break in more 207. So what's the point of the abstract stack machine, the ASM? Why introduce it now? So if you remember, we recently introduced this idea of mutability in OCaml. Remember, in OCaml, everything is immutable by default, which means it can't be changed. But now that we've introduced this idea of mutable state, it's important to look at uh, how this in-place update of the values in memory actually goes on. And we have this abstract model for doing that, which is the abstract stack machine. And it's just that. It's an abstraction that enables us to think about how our software behaves under the hood. Um, so there are three parts of the abstract stack machine. You have the workspace, you have the stack, and then you have the heap. So what does each section of the ASM account for? So the workspace is the home to uh, basically the expressions and the bindings that the code that you would see in an IDE like Eclipse or Codeo. So we'll actually evaluate this code with the ASM. But before we do, let's have a quick refresher on the purpose and the role of the stack and the heap. Uh, so the stack is responsible for, uh, for keeping track of a couple things. Uh, one of them, and, and most significantly, uh, it keeps track of the bindings that, that map the identifier uh, to its value. So what is a binding? Essentially, whenever you see a let keyword, that's a terrible circle, that's signaling to OCaml that there's about to be a binding, a binding from identifier, in this case x, to its value, which is 22. Uh, so in this case, 22 is an int, x is an int, which means that it's primitive. So if it's primitive, then both the identifier and the value, the entire mapping, is stored on the stack. If it's a non-primitive data type, then the identifier goes on the stack, and its value, its non-primitive value, uh, goes on the heap. So what else goes on the stack in this model? Uh, the stack, beyond bindings, also keeps track of uh, partially simplified expressions. Remember, the ASM is the simplification model. So expressions that are being partially simplified, uh, but you need to wait until you're finished computing something else to evaluate them, that, that workspace goes on, goes on the stack. That's called pushing the workspace to the stack. Uh, uh, nice thing about the stack, and one of the subtleties of it, and I guess the point of it, is once you are ready to start evaluating and simplifying, you can go from the bottom, the most recent entries in the stack, uh, bottom up, right? The stack is a LIFO structure, so last in, first out. Uh, so it's, it makes figuring out which values pl to plug in where really, really simple. And we'll see all this in the example that we'll go to in a sec. So what about the heap? Remember, the heap is now this, this model of the computer's uh, memory, right? Storage of the non-primitive data types. That all goes in the heap. And uh, in the abstract stack machine, everything points to the heap. That's a nice uh, little subtlety to remember, a nice little trick to remember. Everything points to the, steep, to the heap, whether from the stack or from the workspace. Uh, the heap is, 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 is the model of the actual memory of the computer. And it's nice because it, it kind of gives you this notion of, of not only where everything resides in memory, but also how the different structures in memory interact. So let's actually look at the evaluation of this code, this chunk of code on the abstract stack machine so we can see this puppy in action. Uh, and I think this example will kind of shed light on the different qualifications that we use to simplify and, 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 and evaluate a ready expression. Uh, so at each step in simplification, what you want to do is find the leftmost ready expression. What do I mean when I say that uh, something is ready? Ready basically means that it's ready to be simplified. So we start here, we see that we have this let binding, this local let. We have let x equal 22 in, and then the rest of the body. We know that this let binding right here, this let expression, is ready because here 22 is a value. So what do we do? We can now make this uh, binding on the stack. We can, we can put this on the stack. So we draw a box right? And we put x, the name in the, in the left. And since this is a primitive, an int, int is primitive, then 22, its value, also goes on the stack. And now that we've evaluated this guy, get rid of this guy from the workspace. 
Okay, next step. We looked at the left. We look at the leftmost expression, and we see if it's ready. So is this here? We see we have another uh, let declaration. This local let let y equals two plus x in, and then we have the body, and we ask ourselves, is it ready? Well, no, it's not ready yet. The reason being that this x is not a value. So first thing we need to do is figure out what this x is. So x being a variable is always ready. Uh, meaning that we can now look for x's value in the stack and pop it in there so that this let declaration will be ready. So we see uh, from the stack that x is 22. So what we can do is replace that x with this value, 22. Uh, and then we can keep chugging along. Here we go. So this plus sign is a primitive operator. And the primitive operator is always ready if all of its arguments are values. So in this case, we have 2 and 22, both of which are values. So this primitive operator is ready to be simplified. And 2 plus 22 simplifies to 24. And now we have this let y equal 24 in body. 24 is a value. So this let expression is ready. We can create a new binding on the stack. y, 24 is primitive. It's an int, so it goes right there. And then boom we get to keep on chugging. So we're ready for the next step. So the next expression structure that we see is our famous conditional statement here. And a conditional statement is ready if the predicate, namely this expression is here, is either true or false. And then what you do once it's either true or false is you replace it with the appropriate branch. Now, is this true or false yet? No, we see that it's this uh, primitive operator expression. And remember what we said before, one is a primitive operator, like greater than, like less than, like plus. One is that ready? It's ready when both of its arguments are values. Well, 23 is a value, but x is not a value, remember. But x is ready. So first thing we got to do is replace x with its value so that this guy will be ready. So we underline x to signify that that's what we're going to do. And then we replace it with its value with 22. And remember, when we look for in the stack for which value to replace it with, we go from the bottom to the top. The stack is this LIFO, last in, first out structure. So now we have an expression in here, which this expression, it's a primitive operator. Both of its arguments are values, so this is ready to be simplified. So we do that. 22 is not greater than 23, last time I checked. And now we have this conditional statement with false right there in the predicate. So this entire statement is ready. If it's false, then what we do is you replace the workspace with the appropriate branch. So if false, then three else four just goes to four. So now we're done. Congratulations. We've evaluated this chunk of code using the abstract stack machine. When I'm done, I'd like to draw a big money symbol because it's quite simply money in the bank. Now we won't actually be going through all of these steps uh, when we do more complex examples, we'll be condensing a lot of it. But uh, I do think that even when we get into some of those examples, thinking about it in this framework, this framework of finding the leftmost expression, is it ready? If not, get it so that it's ready and then simplify it. If you follow that, I think it makes the, the later examples uh, a lot more doable. And again, this is very useful for thinking about how code is evaluated and how software behaves under the hood. But it is just an abstraction. It does hide many of the, the nuances and, and features of, of the memory of a computer. Uh, some, we'll be kind of adding to this model as we go into more complex examples to better illustrate mutability and option types and different types of structures, but, but um, I hope this helped, and uh, please check in for later videos. Bye.